this year's draft class, 2024, everyone hated this running back class. Uh, I didn't think it was as bad as most people did, but the general consensus, and obviously the NFL felt pretty much the same way given where they were drafted, is we do not like this class. What does next year's look like? Uh, I, I'm calling it the running back renaissance. I, I think you have a lot of guys who could have came out last year and didn't. And I remember uh, about a month or two ago when Max and I were doing our top 10 running back list for the, for this season. I originally, I was writing down names and, and I got to like 30 names that I was like, oh, I have to narrow it down from this for a top 10. And there was probably only four or five that I knew, okay, that guy has to be in. This is, this is an insane class, the amount of talent. I think between young kids coming up to be draft eligible and the kids that came back, uh, this is this is the year. If you want, if you want a running back, if I, this is as good a class as I can remember. When you're talking about Ollie Gordon, despite his recent issues, you know, having 1,700 yards last year in basically 10 games, Quinshawn Judkins has been spectacular for two years, and he's a missed tackle machine. Amarion Hampton at North Carolina is just a beast, man. We, you know, we talked to Mac Brown, and he said, "Look." Guys in practice hate tackling this guy. And he led the nation in yards after contact. You can see why at 220 with 23 mile an hour speed, and he is angry. He just runs pissed off. And honestly, a guy that we also talked to and and maybe my favorite of the bunch is Boise State's Ashton Genty. There's a lot of steam coming up on him for his draft stock. And I'll tell you, he's the best dual threat back in the country, and it's not close. He was a receiver and an edge player in high school. Didn't play running back till his senior year. But you can see, even when he lines up out at receiver, it is so smooth. You know, another one, the Alvin Kamara comp gets dropped way too much for any back that can reasonably catch the ball. Genty's a different animal, man. Like, there is a chance that he could almost single-handedly carry Boise State to the college football playoff with the new 12-team format. He is that good. And then you go, okay, well, he's playing at Boise. He's playing in the Mountain West. Flip on his tape last year. They got He got to play Washington, the national runner-up early in the year. And UCLA in the bowl game, even without Latu, is still one of the best defenses in the country and still at over 100 total yards in both games with really not much passing game for Boise. Those four guys stand out. But when you talk about, man, Travion Henderson playing with Judkins at Ohio State, Jaden Ott at Cal, R.J. Harvey at UCF, Devin Neal at Kansas, Damian Martinez at Miami, Kyle Manungai at Rutgers, and there's still probably 12 other guys we could get into. This is a stacked running back class. I, I could see somewhere – like 15 guys getting like a top four round grade somewhere in there. There is just, it's such a different animal. I think there's a, those first four that I mentioned probably all would have been RB one last year. Yeah. And I wonder how big a factor that is when guys are weighing up, you know, the, the Tory Horton de uh, decision we just talked about uh, Jonathan Brooks as well. Like when you're weighing up, are you coming out or are you, are you staying in school? how much those guys are actually looking at next year's draft class because for Horton, I mean, you, you just argued reasonably that it made sense for him to stay in school a year. He might go higher next year. Uh, for Brooks, I think the way the NFL running back dynamic works, it made sense for him to come out anyway and just get the clock ticking on that second NFL contract. But we, it makes even more sense when you factor in everyone hated this draft class. Like he had a pretty good shot of being RB1 even coming off the ACL and uh, next year's draft class appears to be insane. He might be, you know, a, a borderline top 10 running back in next year's draft class. Or, I mean, you know, recovered, he could be amazing. He could be RB1 as well. But, like, that's a pretty good incentive to come out this year, even coming off an injury rather than stay in school and uh, try and do it again next year. Yeah, absolutely. And he got to go to a really good situation where if he's healthy, gee, there's no reason he shouldn't start in Carolina. I think that's a great mutual kind of situation there. But no, this class right now, uh, Brooks, and I love Brooks, man. He's a hard, he's a hard nosed runner. He's a great zone runner. And he was a perfect fit in that Texas offense. But I'm not sure he would be higher than fifth in this group. And, and that's even with a healthy, probably another solid, you know, if he was healthy the whole year, 12, 1300 yard season, just because these guys are so, so good. Some of them have done it for multiple years. Some of them exploded onto the scene last year. But I think the other thing you have to like about this class is there's a little bit of everything, right? You want a dual threat guy, you take Jinty. You want a one cut runner, you take Jade Knott. You want a space player, you take Devin Neal. You want a big guy, you take a Damian Martinez or a Taj Brooks. Like, and, and I thought, you know, Taj Brooks was another one who I think a lot of people expected to come out last year and didn't. He stayed at Texas Tech. So 
there is all sorts of different types of runners, and there's even more. There's even more guys who are getting their first chance to start this year. I look at a Jordan James from Oregon, who's probably going to have a huge year because every running back at Oregon has a huge year. Who's going to be starting for the first time now with Bucky Irving drafted, and and he could find himself right on this radar. So I, I think if you're looking for running backs, um, I don't. I, next year, I don't. I, you know, free agency is going to be tough for any free agent running backs because there is just a boatload of talent coming up.